Okay. All right. So before we get started, does anybody have any questions about what we talked about last week? Um, today, what we're going to do, I know last week we talked about just some good uh, general nutrition. Today, uh, I know we're doing kind of a, a weight loss uh, thing, so I want to talk about just some good weight loss tips. Um, it, it will touch a little bit about what we talked about last week because, again, with just some good nutrition, taking care of yourself, a great side effect, a great side effect of that is actually losing weight. Uh, so. Um, we'll, we'll touch on a few different things, some, some new stuff, and then just kind of some review from that as well. So, again, during the, the uh, presentation, if anybody has any questions in your time, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. All right, so again, my name is Ross. Um, so, uh, last week, uh, you know, what we talked about, again, what we wanted to take away from last week is we want to try to limit or really decrease the amount of uh, processed, highly refined carbohydrates. A good example of that are your fruit juices, your sodas any type of your baked goods, um, any frozen dinners that you just throw in the microwave, typically is really high in, in processed carbohydrates. Um, so we want to try to stay away from that as much as we can. Okay? Um, we talked a little bit about the 50-30-20 rule, where we want about 50% of our diet to be good fats, 30% of our diet to be protein, and 20% of our diet to be complex carbohydrates. Again, to have some simple sugar uh, sugars on occasion, it's certainly not a bad thing. We just want to try to moderate that as much as we can. Okay. So again, our good fats are saturated, unsaturated, both good. Cholesterol is fine. We're finding out cholesterol is not a big deal. But we want to stay away from any trans fatty acids or any type of triglycerides. Okay, That's where we get a lot of the heart disease, strokes, and we with that type of fat. Um, and then the complex carbohydrates are your fruits, your vegetables, and food grains, um, some, some healthy nuts on occasion, like almonds. But those are always good as well. And so we've got a little chart down here. This is the glycemic index that we were kind of talking about too. So it's a good way to eat. If you see the high glycemic index, which is on the number scale, is typically from 55 to 100. Um, we see that in a very short time frame, we have huge blood glucose levels. Okay, so whenever all we have all that that sugar in the blood, our body needs to do something with it. The the glucose. Glucose is the, the body's main fuel, and, and so what we have to do is we have to release that, that insulin from the pancreas to put that sugar into cells. If there's not being used, then what it does is the, the, the insulin puts uh, the sugar into fat cells, so we have more adipose tissue over time. Whereas a low glycemic index, okay, we actually see over time, it's a lot longer of a time, it's just very kind of short little spurts of sugar that's released, um, and so we actually use it more efficiently, so we don't actually gain more from it. Um, this is a, a big one. Um, obviously, if you're eating well, uh, you want to try to stay uh, and, and want to do some, some exercise. Okay? Um, and we can start at, at any time, really. I mean, there's been plenty of uh, patients I've seen that are 85 years old that we start doing a very light exercise regime. Okay? So, um, what it is, three or four times a week is great. If you can't make it, if your schedule doesn't allow you to do three or four times, that's not a big deal. And I don't want you to feel like you have to work out an hour a day to kind of get any results. Um, actually, studies are showing that as little as 10 to 15 minutes a day do a great job in keeping, making sure that you don't become insulin resistant, you have uh, a, a better body composition, you sleep better, you just feel better overall. Um, and it's always good if we can uh, to do some weight training, um, some resistance training. It does so much for us, and, and I uh, definitely let women know too that it's very important to do weight training with women too. You're not going to look like a guy. You don't produce testosterone like we do, so you're not going to get big and bulky. The women that look like that typically are taking some type of steroid or testosterone booster. But weights are very important. Um, we're seeing, even in men too, uh, really a huge rise in osteoporosis. So weight training is going to make those the, the, the bones a lot stronger. So we're going to actually get better bone density. We're going to have stronger joints, stronger muscles, ligaments, tendons, all the connected tissues. Okay. But along too, whenever we do weight training, we tend to put on more lean muscle. The more lean muscle we have, the more mitochondria we have in our cells, our muscle cells. Mitochondria is an organelle, and what it is, it's known as the powerhouse of the cell. So that's actually where we get our energy produced from it is the mitochondria. So the more weight training we do, the more lean muscle we put on, the more lean muscle we actually have, we actually we typically burn more calories. 
So somebody that has more lean muscle will burn more calories during their sleep than somebody that has less lean muscle. So we want to make sure that we're doing weight training. Again, as I kind of touched a little bit last week, is with some, some weight training, as we uh, as, as gentlemen, or as, as men age, uh, we decrease testosterone, which is very, very important. So weight training actually makes sure that we, we keep our testosterone levels increased. The, the bottom here, the interval training, um, this is, Interval training is really great for, for burning fat. Um, what interval training is, is basically you have short um, uh, times of intensity and then some, and then slower times after that, okay? So interval training, like a good one for like running example, okay? You would sprint for say 15 seconds and then jog at a lot of pace for about 45 seconds and do that numerous times over and over. You can do that with weights too. Uh, you can do some, some weights to where you're um, maybe doing a lighter squats, maybe about 15 to 20 of them really fast, and then you take about a minute break and you kind of get right back into it. Uh, but interval training is really great to, to, it's by far the best calorie and fat burner whenever it comes to weight training, but you can do it in so many different ways too. Whenever you do cardio, it, it's much better actually uh, for us because we have uh, fast twitch muscles that are being used more often with uh, interval training as opposed to the slow twitch muscles. And so uh, it decreases some stress hormones, which we'll talk about here pretty soon. It'll decrease stress hormones that are released, so we don't get all the soreness. Um, we don't have, um, you know, the the, um, the 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 injuries and things like that. So interval training is great. So really, again, what it is, just very quickly, is some short in, uh, intense bursts followed up by uh, just some short uh, rest period. Okay, so that would be something I would definitely look into. Okay, and we talked about water. We need to drink water. It's very, very important. 83% of our body is actually made up of water. So just a good rule of thumb is we want about half our body weight in ounces. And like I said yesterday, I'm typically getting between about 190 and 200 pounds, so I try to get about 100 ounces of water a day. Um, you want to increase that and drink even more if we're drinking sodas, teas, or coffee that's caffeinated. Uh, caffeine's a diuretic, so it makes us want to uh, go to the bathroom and, and uh, go to the bathroom a little bit more, so we're going to actually become dehydrated that way. Uh, with dehydration, we're going to um, have a bit more pain, we're going to be more sensitive to some different things, um, and also, too, whenever we're chronically dehydrated, like we said, um, the part of our brain that makes sure that we're eating at appropriate times will not function correctly. And so we're actually, typically, we overeat whenever we don't, whenever we're not properly hydrated. So we want to try to decrease uh, the juices, the sodas, as much as we can, just for the most part, the, the sugar content of them. Um, tea, some people are sensitive to tea. They, they're, they're pretty high in antioxidants, but it's, it's caffeinated, so you know some people are kind of sensitive to, uh, to caffeine. So it's completely up to you whether or not you want to do tea. You want to just don't want to do the, uh, the green teas are the better. The, 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 the sweet teas is kind of what we want to stay away from, and just from the sugar content. Uh, coffee um, can actually be very good for you. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a good amount of caffeine, so we stay mentally alert. Caffeine actually increases the metabolism as well in our body, which the higher the metabolism, the more calories we burn. Um, caffeine is loaded in antioxidants, which is very important for a lot of different reasons, but a big one is immunity, so we want to make sure we're having some good antioxidants in, in, in the body. But the thing with coffee is typically uh, it's the stuff we put into coffee that actually makes it pretty bad. Okay, so it's the, we load it down with sugar and creamer. Uh, creamer is typically very processed. There's no nutrition in it whatsoever. It's pretty bad for you. So typically, I try to uh, just drink mine straight black. On occasion, if I need to put something on it, maybe it's a little bitter. I'll put maybe some almond milk. Um, and, and another thing that I do too, which probably um, sound probably pretty crazy, but again, I try to put a lot of fat into my diet, so I actually put butter. As well. I know it sounds crazy, but just to make sure that I eat, <laughs> I see a few faces like, well, what? But yeah, I put coconut oil and I put butter in, in my coffee as well. So, uh, but it's very healthy. Uh, like I said, I don't put any sugar, any cream, anything like that. So, the coffee is very good for you. Oh, and then the coffee. Yes, sir. What do you put in your coffee? I put, um, every once in a while, I put almond milk in it, um, and then I put butter and I put coconut oil in it as well to get some good oils and fats in there. It gives you the flavor too. It's not so bitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, and two, whenever we drink coffee, um, you know, typically three or four cups a day is kind of what we're looking for. Anything more than that is typically overkill and it can be uh, more detrimental to good for us. 
All right, so this is a big one too. Uh, and we've got to have good intestinal health, okay? Um, we want a diet rich in fiber, which we're going to get that again from fruits and vegetables, uh, leafy greens, that type of thing. It's going to help us control hunger um, so we don't get um, that uh, we get uh, satiated better and we eat um, the, the calories we're actually supposed to consume and bring in. And it's definitely going to control blood sugar as well. Uh, fiber actually decreases LDL, which is your low density lipoproteins, which is what we don't want floating in the bloodstream. And it's going to do the, and it's going to increase the HDLs, which is the high density lipoproteins, which is what we want. And that's what we want. We want definitely a higher ratio of HDLs compared to LDLs. Fiber does a great job of making sure we have that good ratio. It's going to increase metabolism, which again, the, the higher the metabolism is, uh, the, the more calories we burn. And as we age, typically our metabolism does decrease. And so we want to treat, keep that as high as we can. Um, it's a complex carbohydrate, so it's going to take a while to, um, to be broken down. That's how it controls blood sugar. Um, and as we talked about yesterday or last week, uh, complex carbohydrates, uh, actually your body has to expend energy to break it down. Um, and then uh, to, to form, uh, we actually burn more calories, breaking down the complex carbohydrates to make calories. Uh, and then very, very important for immunity. Intestinal health is, is very important for immunity. The majority of your immunity, uh, the strength of your immunity actually comes from your intestines. And so fiber is going to make sure that it stays strong and also too it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's going to help with gut motility as well. So make sure any waste we have in there uh, gets cleaned out uh, as quickly as possible. All right, so um, being a chiropractor, I don't prescribe medication or pain medication, so I try to do as much as I can um, through diet um, and also through supplementation too. So uh, these are really just a great foundation. I take these every day along with some other stuff too, but uh, great multivitamins, so you make sure you're getting all the, the vitamins and minerals that you need with an antioxidant to make sure everything uh, uh, is working properly in the body, have a strong immune system. Again, we touched on fiber. Vitamin D uh, is, is incredibly important for us. It, it does so much more than just give us strong bones. Um, it's, every cell in our body has a vitamin D receptor. We have trillions of cells in our body. And, and so you're, you're finding now too, more and more research over the past five to 10 years, vitamin D is important for vascular health, uh, it's important for heart health, it's important to make sure that the pancreas is used, being used correctly, um, people that have diet and diabetes or people that are pre-diabetic, vitamin D is incredibly important for them because um, it's um, it, it's very important for insulin to be released properly from the pancreas. But it just does so, so much for us. So I take vitamin D every day. In the summertime, I will decrease it because I try to get out in the sun as much as I can, get some good UVB rays. But I take about six to 8,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. Uh, it's important for uh, immunity. It's very important for uh, proper body composition too. To make sure that we have our, our correct weight. And then omega-3 fatty acids, very, very important too. Um, it's very important for body composition, but our brain, spinal cord, our peripheral nerves are wrapped in fat. And so um, omega-3 fatty acids, we want to have that to make sure our nervous system stays strong as well. So that's just a, a really good kind of a, a, a base as far as some supplementation if, if anybody's interested. That's a good base. Some other just really simple, great tips to, to do to, to have some good weight loss is again, uh, we want to make sure that we keep our metabolism going as much as we can. And so you see a lot of crash diets out there where you know somebody might uh, lose maybe 20 or 30 pounds in a month, um, but it, it's, it doesn't teach you very good um, eating habits. What it does is it kind of starves the system. And so yes, you lose a lot of weight, but once you actually start eating well again, your body's in starve mode, so it actually just it conserves and, and keeps everything so you actually gain all that weight back and many times actually more. So we want to make sure that we're eating. Obviously the healthier the, the, the better, but a good rule of thumb here is about every about 10 calories for every uh, pound of, of body weight. So again, I'm say 200 pounds, I try to get at least 2,000 calories a day in my diet. Okay. Um, the, the higher calorie content, you're going to get more from proteins and fats. Um, you know, your, your fruits and vegetables are, going to, are not going to be as calorie dense as, as your fat. That's why I put so much fat in my diet. Um, we want to make sure we're sleeping well. Um, we adults, 78 hours a, a, a night. Adolescents are typically about 10. So if maybe if you have any young children and they're sleeping at 10 nights or 10 hours a night, don't get upset with them. Don't get mad at them. They actually need that because whenever we sleep, growth hormone is released and so it actually helps us 
uh, to kind of mature and, 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 and um, get older. So don't don't get mad if you have somebody that's sleeping 10 hours and they're maybe 10, 11, 12 years old. So don't, don't be upset with them. But as adults, seven, eight hours of sleep is perfect for us. Uh, anything less, we typically will increase the stress in the system. Um, sleep is very important for mental health. It's very important to uh, just decrease the, the stress from, from the day, whether it be work, uh, you know, just so much different stuff. So um, very, very important to do that. If we don't sleep very well, then we typically do uh, gain weight uh, because of stress and also too because we start to overeat. So we want to make sure a good seven to eight hours of sleep a night is what we want to try to do to go with. We want to try to decrease stress as much as possible. There are so many uh, different different ways to be stressed. It could be uh, environmental stress, it, it could be work, it could be um, mental stress, it, it could be physical stress. Exercise is actually a stressor, and that's why whenever we exercise, we want to try to eat well with it too. So there are a lot of different ways to be stressed, and that typically over time just builds up and builds up, and um, we just have so many problems from it, too much stress. And so uh, the stress hormones, we talked a little bit about insulin, what it does in the body. Uh, cortisol is released from the adrenal glands. And cortisol, what it does whenever we're in a, in a stressful situation, uh, it's increased in, in the blood. It's definitely going to decrease immunity. Um, and what it does too is it makes us store fat. So the higher the cortisol level, along with the higher the insulin level, uh, it makes us uh, have a lot higher uh, fat storage. So we want to try to control that as much as we can. So therefore, we want to try to control our stress as much as we can too. So whether that be uh, exercise is a stressor but too, it actually is a stress reliever too. It's kind of funny how that, that works. But I know it's starting to get nicer outside. So if we like to go fish, I mean, do anything we can just to kind of reduce the amount of stress uh, in our lives. We need to try to do that. Okay, so um, another great tip is whenever we eat, we want to try to eat slowly. Okay, I know Shannon and I talked a little bit about this. Whenever we eat, um, we can break down with our mouth. Our mouth actually produces a couple of enzymes that will break down carbohydrates and proteins. It's amylase, uh, they'll break all that stuff down. So um, whenever we eat slowly, it'll actually start being broke down. So whenever it gets into our stomach and into our intestines, it's already broken out enough we'll be able to absorb everything all the nutrition we need from it. So we want to eat slowly doing that way. Also, too, whenever we eat slowly, a, a chemical is, is produced in our intestines known as renulin that is really important to make sure that we don't overeat. Okay, so the slower we eat, typically uh, we get the, the satisfaction. Obviously, you'll be able to, to really taste and enjoy your food. Uh, but the slower we eat, too, uh, we, we get the, the true uh, the safety from, from what we eat so we don't eat too many calories. So the faster we, we consume our food, we typically tend to overeat. So you want to try to slow down. Enjoy your food, enjoy the moment, and that will be a really important to make sure we have proper body composition, we don't overeat. Another good, just a little tip here, is use smaller plates. The, the, the larger plates that we use, like in Thanksgiving, for example, we, we just pile everything off. When you have all that food on there, you feel like you have to eat it. I know I do on Thanksgiving. I'll probably get like 10 pounds over Thanksgiving. So what we want to do is try to use smaller plates. Therefore, there will be smaller servings. So again, we don't overeat. We don't want to overeat. So that's just a good little tip, too. Um, and then the bottom here, here's, here's a picture. And hopefully you guys can see it on, on, on here. My um, light is small. This is a newer concept. Um, it's probably been in the last year or two years. It's intermittent fasting. Okay, so... Um, what that is, and there's been a lot of research on it, really a lot of fantastic research coming out of like BYU and UCLA, John Hopkins has been doing a lot of research on intermittent fasting. So what that is, is basically you want to eat in a smaller time window. So when we get up in the morning, whether it be 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, what we typically do is maybe we'll pour ourselves a cup of coffee, we'll go ahead and eat, we want to break our fast, we have breakfast. You know, that's 7 o'clock in the morning, then we go, we work all day, we're eating, we get home maybe around 7 o'clock, and then we have dinner. You might eat at around 7, 8 o'clock. And if you look at that time frame, that's 12 to 13 hours you're bringing in calories, okay? So with intermittent fasting, what you want to try to do is, is try to decrease that, that time frame. So maybe try to eat at an 8-hour Maybe start off doing 10 hours, but eat in an eight hour time frame, okay? So typically on the days that I don't do any resistance training, I won't actually consume my first calories till about noon or one o'clock. And then I'll typically eat dinner around seven o'clock and I'll be done at 7.30. So I'm eating at about a seven and a half hour 
time frame right there. I'm getting the same amount of calories. I'm still eating my 2,000 calories. I'm not decreasing that. I'm just decreasing the time frame. Okay. And there's been a really a lot of fantastic research on on the, the proper use of insulin so we don't get insulin resistance. And actually, too, John Hopkins is doing a lot with uh, cancer, a lot of cancer research and intermittent fasting. Um, you still want, like I said, you still want to bring in the same amount of calories, you just want to decrease the window. So if you can see in this picture right here, with all the, the right here from about 8 a.m., that's sleep. So obviously, whenever you sleep, you're not going to be hungry, you don't realize you're hungry. So, you know, that's always an important thing. But then, and I'm, I apologize, I'm colorblind, I don't know what those colors are. But from about 10 to noon, you can see here, that's our fasting period. And then from noon to about 8 o'clock, and you can do however you want. And if you want to have dinner at 6 o'clock, you can have your first power at 10, 10 a.m. if you want to. But you just want to do it in a, in a smaller time frame. And then the rest of the evening, we don't, besides water, we don't bring in any more calories. And so I think that's something worth checking out. I really, really do. I do it. You don't have to do it seven days a week. The research is showing that even three to four days, um, you get the same results from doing it seven days a week. So I do intermittent fasting about three, maybe four times a week. Um, it's tough at first because you, you get hungry, you want to eat, but over time doing that, it gets so much easier. Now, like I said, about one o'clock on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, um, I'm not even hungry, but I'm like, okay, it's time to go ahead and start bringing in calories. So that's definitely worth a look. Okay, so, um, and I think that's part of it. Are we good on time? Right on. Perfect, perfect. So, um, take that home, please. Use that. Be, any questions, anything, anything I can clear up before? I think this is my time I'm out here. So, anything I can clear up before, before I get out of here? Yes, sir. On the supplements of vitamin D, I don't know if it's because of my wife's medication she's on, but uh, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. okay. The doctors. So her, her vitamin D was too high. So they okay. told her to back off this area and start going and let her bring it up. Okay. Okay. So, would it be a good thing, like, if someone is blocked if they're going to take a supplement, give it to the doctor first and do blood work? Yes, absolutely. And you definitely want to do blood work. You want to check to see where it's at. Um, you don't typically see too much vitamin D. Probably 90% of the U.S. is actually insufficient in the Deficient vitamin D, so um, you know it, that's that's pretty interesting. Right? You don't really see an ovary because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, so it actually gets stored. So whenever your body needs, it's whenever it takes it out and it puts it in the bloodstream. So um, yeah, I mean you wanna you wanna definitely get some blood work done to kind of see where that's at. Anytime somebody comes into my office and we have just a lot of general issues, a lot of things going on, I always get blood work done. And vitamin D is one of the, the, the top things. Like we want to make sure our vitamin D is, is checked. And 100% um, of the people that I see um, are vitamin D deficient. Um, and the main reason is because we get most of our vitamin D, our body actually makes our own vitamin D, so we get from the sun. UVB rays are very important. Well, you know, anytime anybody goes out in the sun, we're always slathering up a lot on the sunscreen, so that, that decreases that. With where we're at as far as latitude being in Kentucky, it, it takes until about June before we start getting the proper UVB rays just because of the, the tilting of the earth. And, and so, and also too, we're working. The best time to get our vitamin D is from about 10 to 3. So we're all inside working, so we don't get the proper vitamin D. So, um, but yeah, definitely um, you want to keep that under control because it, it can, you can't have some toxicity. Uh, it's very, very tough to do that. Um, but she wants to, to make sure to keep monitoring and make sure that it, it goes down the way of the proper levels for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions, Anthony? Yes, what about the fast food for diabetes? And actually, too, that's another a lot of great research is, is, is showing, too, that you become more sensitive to insulin. Now, with diabetics, depending on how long you've had diabetes, your, your pancreas might not increase any insulin whatsoever. Um, but Di diabetes is a full system. I mean, it, your kidneys, your heart, I mean, everything. It's a full system. And so with the intermittent fasting, it, it's, 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 studies are showing that it's very, very good for diabetics, pre-diabetics, um, that are actually still producing insulin. You lose a lot of body fat, which is what you need. You want to try to get as, uh, as lose as much adipose tissue as you can while you have diabetes. And so there's been a lot of research showing how well it does for diabetes. I know my fiance's mother is diabetic. And I've been a lot of nutrition with her, and she's doing some intermittent fasting, right? just a couple days a week, 
Um, but her blood work, she gets blood work done about every six months. And we've been doing this for now, for about six months, and her blood work really came. Last time she went to go see her, her uh, primary care physician came back and it really looked fantastic. So would it's very interval, safe. Would the interval be the same or probably for a diabetic? They may want to start out with it. Uh, starting out, range. yeah, yeah, starting out eight hours might be a little bit tough. That's what I do. But starting out, uh, you know, it, it, just kind of monitor, like, okay, I'm bringing my first calories at seven. I, I don't have dinner until about eight o'clock, so I'm eating on a good 13 to 14 hours. You know, just see, like, okay, it's been 14 hours and that's what I ate all day. So maybe starting off, I'll try to do it in maybe 11 or 12 hours and then take it down to 10 hours. And then from 10 hours, nine, just kind of gradually work your way down. You don't need to go any lower than eight hours a day. That's what I go. You don't need to go any lower. Uh, but yeah, you want to do kind of a gradual, tra gradual decrease. Definitely keep an eye on your sugar. Yeah. 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 Yeah.